Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here from Love Do, and welcome back to the Houdini for MoGraph series. Today we'll be making this sort of amorphous blob. The big takeaway from this video will be the introduction of something called VDBs. VDBs are essentially a volume and can be converted into something with density like smoke. We're going to be using SDFs, which can be converted back into Geo. So working with VDBs is a much smoother process than using something like Booleans when combining objects that are changing shape or complexity since it's reliant on the inside the geo rather than dealing with topology on the surface. All right, I'm going to show you how to make this example, so let's get into it. We first want to get some particles swirling around, so drop a sphere to use as an emitter, and we'll give it some motion for the particles to follow. So in the center, I'll just use a sine function, typing sine parentheses dollar $f times 0.4 close those parentheses and multiply by two. Then I'm gonna copy that into the Z and I'm just gonna change it to cosine so that we have it moving in a circle and I'll change the two to 3.5 to make it more of an oval shape. Again, I'm gonna paste it into the Y and change the four to two and the two to 1.5 so that it has some vertical motion as well. Drop a null and name it target and then make a pop net and dive inside. I don't want a constant stream of particles I'm just emitting right at the beginning. So turn down the constant activation in the source node to zero. Now in the impulse count, let's do 150. And for this impulse, we only want it to emit on frame one. So type $SF for simulation frame rather than global frame equals equals one. Drop a pop wind, bringing the air resistance to 0.1 and adding in some noise. Now to add some variety, check on Vexpressions and type air resist. This is a attribute specific to this node, so you don't need an at symbol times equals fit 01 parentheses rand parentheses add id comma 0.05 to point or 1.5 add the semicolon and cool now let's use a pop attract node to make the particles follow our object and change the type to points now find our target in the sop path then in the goal velocities, just change all of those to one. Now in the force tab, I'll also bring up the force scale to aim at our target. So it looks good, but since these are all aiming at the same thing, they're kind of getting stuck together. So to help that out, drop a pop flock node. To avoid that central flocking, turn all these central forces to zero. And then bring down the avoid force to one and the max distance up a bit, almost one. And I'll also turn down the vel match a bit. This makes them try to match the velocity of the particles around them. But I like some of the randomness happening, so don't really want them to all move at the same speed. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm cool with this sim. So pop out drop a sphere and a copy to points. I'm going to do an attribute randomize set to one dimension and name it P scale. And I'm going to do a range of 0.2 to 0.6. All right, VDB time. Let's mesh all these spheres together now. So drop a VDB from polygons node. And you can see we have this look, which isn't quite geometry. It's not quite volume. If you uncheck this distance and check on fog, you'll see something that looks more like a traditional volume, but we actually do want that distance one to uh, use the SDFs. The voxel size here is like a sampling slider. So a lower size gives you more details, but 0.1 is okay for our purposes. Now I'm going to drop a convert VDB node and change it to polygons. 
and you can hit W and see the wireframe that this is actually a mesh now that you could render right as is. Now I just want to adjust the shape a little bit, make it more blob-like, less noticeably spheres. So I'm going to use a VDB smooth node. And you can use this iteration slider to just smooth out the volume a bit. Now, if you look at the mesh before and after the VDB, you'll see that overall after converting, it looks a little bit smaller. So to kind of just counter that effect, we're going to use a VDB reshape node after the smooth. And it's defaulted to dilate, which essentially acts like an extrude. So I'm just going to push it out a bit to get some of that shape back. And there you have it, a little introduction of VDBs. We'll absolutely be using this again at some point for some cool procedural modeling. Um, you'll also use this to mesh fluids. So keep that in mind. We'll definitely be using this again later. The project files are on our site as always. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time. <laughs>